thanks Maxon for you know having us again back to NAB. We've been doing some of these presentations. You know, um, as you might know, uh, well, my name is Mari Romances. I work at Territory Studio, and we create things like what you see here. This is our work. What we do is a lot of film, a lot of holographic stuff. So uh, we're getting into lunchtime here, but I know that there's no lunchtime now in London and San Francisco where our teams are. So hi to everyone who's watching from, from the studio. Um, again, I'm the t creative director and co-founder of Territory Studio San Francisco. Uh, Territory Studio started in London. That was nine years ago. David uh, Sheldon Higgs and Nick Glover started the company. And then since then, we've been expanding in all of these locations, including Vancouver soon. Uh, we work on films. We do all sorts of uh, holograms, visual effects, user interfaces. We pretty much tell stories through the graphic design that, that we apply into, into those films. And some are, you know, very futuristic. Others are very different, like you, you cannot compare Zoolander 2 to Guardians of the Galaxy, of, for example. So uh, I want to show a little bit of what we do before we jump into some quick tips and tricks on Cinema 4D. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, as you can see, we create a lot of different um, holograms for these films and whatnot. And, and in, in the past, as you can check on Cineversity and you know, s some of the Cinema 4D tutorials that we've been doing, we've been showing a lot on how we create these specific things. We've been showing how to create these holograms. Today, I want to take it a little bit into, into a more like entry level. Everyone who can get into Cinema 4D tomorrow, like new user, I want to create these little things that maybe these little tricks could serve you guys not to do exactly what we're going to be showing today, but what, we got, what, you, what you can do with the technique. And uh, I want to start with segmenting volumes. Uh, we're going to be creating things that we create for some films like we did for Blade Runner. We do all of these um, abstract visualizations that, that are very volumetric. And uh, we need to se do so some segments on those uh, 3D volumes sometimes. I want to show a bit about that, even for projects that are not film. We also work a lot in commercial projects, and I think the technique that I'm showing could be applied to some of that, too. As we can see here, brains, you know, um, this was for mile 22. Uh, we're going to create something similar to this brain today, but with a bit of a twist. We're going to give it a bit of a, an extra um, um, MRI of the future, let's say, scan. And we will do it from, from angles like this, but also it will work with angles like that. We'll see how this looks when it's animated. This, this could be just looping on, a, on, on a one of our uh, UI screens, or this beautiful scanning. All of these, we're going to show it very, very quickly right now. We can even change the, the, you know, we can change the, the model after doing this if we want, and apply that same technique to anything else. Once this is built, we can use it in a way that is parametric. And also, we will jump into how to use the same technique to get into some of these more abstract ways to visualize these volumes segmented. So I'm going to show a little bit about that. And to start with, I want to show you um, where the scene lives here. Um, the first thing that we need to do is, uh, of course, create a new scene. Let me pause Octane here for a minute. I want to create a new scene. And uh, I'm going to grab that, that brain, brain that we're using here. There you go. I'm going to grab this uh, model. I'm going to copy it here. 
And here we go. Uh, press H, and this is our our model. It's a normal brain. You can use the brain. We can use whatever you want. Actually, I welcome everyone who's watching from home in front of a computer to start doing this with me, and just to go step by step. Uh, what I want to do also, just to save some time, we have our you know, like everyone, we we just have some octane cameras and they uh, light um, scenes. I just want to copy the lighting from that scene. I'm going gonna, gonna to show you where this lives. It's just like this area light here, and around it we have the, the sky and the daylight. But we're not going to touch much on, on this lighting today. We're going to just put that on a null, check our camera. This is our brain. We have it, and we're going to start segmenting that. Most of you will think, like, well, we could do this with Booleans. With Booleans, you will not get some of the light refraction that the volumes offer, and, 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 and you will see why. I'm going to create. Um, uh, cube, let's say, uh, let's make it a bit, that's, uh, a bit big, there you go. And what we're going to do is we're going to slice this, this this brain right now, right? The first thing that I want to do is already animate this brain. I know that the slicing will go from right to left, and it will cover it. So I can just see where this starts, this starts hitting here. Uh, okay, I'm going to put a keyframe here. I'm going to start animating this. I'm going to control press the, the Z position. And then I'm going to go to, let's say, we give it like 60 frames. Actually, you know what? Let's give it like 90 frames. Why not? And I'm going to move this here, where this is covering my, and we can see that we're actually covering is if we, if we zoom in here for a minute. We are completely covering. The, actually, we are not. We are not covering. So let's just completely cover this brain. There you go. Let's go back to the camera. And now we have uh, this animation, right, that will go from here, and it will cover the, the brain. These are our two elements, really, a cube uh, the, uh, and the brain. And what we want to do now is just start creating that volume. To start creating that volume, I'm going to go to volume, and I will need a volume builder and a volume measure. Then I'm going to just drop my brain into our volume builder, and then we will see that we're creating this Voxels, you know, these voxels actually are the cubes that are giving us the distance in between how much this is affecting and, and calculating every point on that volume. So I can I can change that to something that doesn't necessarily go like that. I can I can drop this builder into the measure, and we start seeing. Okay, we start having a volume from our from our brain. I can uh, keep decreasing this until we start seeing. What we what we want to see, which is our brain. Now this volume builder now is something very interesting to see here. If I just uh, here we go. Now we have this volume using our brain. We also want to drop this cube into our volume. We can drop it under, and we will now see how this it's offering us a, a, a you know a mode. And this is like Photoshop. You can subtract things. You can add things. You can multiply things. So we can see how right now this is still the same. But we can also see that these are starting to interact. We can start creating a geometry here. And if I really just want to see that geometry, I can see how this is now part of the same thing. Now, if I, as soon as I, you know, I could, I could continue doing that. I could continue doing the, the, the mesh like that. But what we have in volumes is two types of volumes, the sine distance fill or the fog. In this case, we want to use the fog because it's going to give us all the points inside of the brain. And that's what we want. Rather than like using a Boolean, we will be using this way. And automatically, this also offers us way much variety in here because now we're talking about volumes, not surfaces. So as soon as I change this to multiply, you will see how, you'll see how I'm going to drop this in. You'll see how now this is acting as a mask. OK, we have the first step, which is like, you know, this volume uh, is now uh, show, you know, solving a masking 3D volumetric problem. Now, how we create the other one? Well, that's pretty simple. Actually, I just need to copy and paste this. And now, instead of having that as a, as a multiply, as, uh, instead of multiplying this, what I want to do is I want to just be subtracting it. Voila, now we have the other one. So now we have already segmented the brain in two parts. 
And you will say, like, okay, uh, that's cool, but we want to create a little bit of a space in between. As you can see on the render, in between, we will have this very, very thin layer that is going to be emitting light, and it's going to be helping us create that a bit more like the, the interesting fill. There is something that uh, my good friend and artist in San Francisco, uh, Carlos Soy, showed me. And I shout out to Carlos because he's a legend. And he's like, you can move animation within the viewport. Because right now, what we want is to offset that, or those keyframes on that animation a little bit to the right. Now, the old way to do this is going to the timeline. And uh, in the timeline, of course, we will see our keys. You know, and we will see how each one has, you know, has his, his, his spline. I, I, in the past, I had to go here and move it. And you can see how I'm splicing that. And that's fine. Like, all of this now is being upset. It. I want to show you a different way to do this. And I recently learned that. In this menu here, you can check animation. And as soon as I then check animation and I move this cube, which is my animated um, element, I can just do that and visually create that. And that, you know, that animation uh, sticks to be the same. So that's, that's a problem solved. We are seeing that the left part of the volume is having also like and a slightly bigger and, 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 and chunkier um, offset. Like we can, we can play with the threshold here until we create something that is uh, what we want. So in this case, something similar to the other section that we have. So we have like the same similar uh, amount of polygons here. Now you said, OK, Marty, you created this one, left, right. How about the middle one? Well, the middle one is slightly different, but it's it, it, it actually the same, um, the same technique. In this case, in this one, we want to go back to, and maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide those guys here. I'm holding Alt and pressing that. So I'm, not, I'm only seeing now this one. As soon as I change our cube that is um, you know, mul multiplying, as soon as I change my cube into something that is way thinner, you will see now I'm subtracting it. But let's go back to multiply because what we want we want it to create is that little slice that we have in the middle, a little slice that we have in the brain. Uh, as soon as I turn on those two fellas here again, wait a second, let's calculate. Now I will I will be able to see where my cube is. I, I actually I can now move this cube myself into the, into position because I made the cube very very thin. Now it it went all the way to the right. But as I can say, as I said before, if you had the animation um, preset on, I can move this and I can see where this is. I can then keep going thinner and thinner. Let's go to 1.1 here. And now we have this slice in the middle. So now all of a sudden, you created what we were looking at in what? Less than, what's my timer? Yeah, in 10 minutes. Right, so and, and I think this is very powerful, especially for like people who are trying to do. In this case, this could be medical, um, you know, a very information. And and let's not forget that this is now uh, without texture. Let me render this. This is what we have. Uh, let me just quickly go to uh, those uh, different materials that we have here. And then let me select all of them. I'm gonna add a copy. This and port it to my other one. Of course, I always use. Um, Red and blue, if you've seen my tutorials. I'm from Barcelona, you know. You need to use those colors. Also, Barcelona now is going through very diff different times, so I support my country from here uh, as much as I can. Let me just go and paste uh, my materials and I start dropping them in. Uh, and you will see how that automatically changed. I'm going to say, you know, the left side is going to be my first one. Well, the, the red one could be the right, the right side. There you go, that's a red one. And the blue one could be the semi-transparent one. There you go. And now I want these is an octane diffu like is an octane diffusion material with a, an, an emission, which is like this material is gonna be emitting light. And look at that. In 10 minutes, we created a pretty decent and fun um, brain here. And the good thing about this is like now you only need to change the camera just to have the other version of it and to have that MRI scan looks. Uh, I can just open this other camera here. There you go. Now let me just press render on that. And now we have this brain, this is the same thing, but seen from a different angle. So now that MRI splice is coming towards the camera and it's creating this 
scanning thing. And for the, again, for, for our films and all of the stuff that we're doing with, you know, all of our film clients to just, we, sometimes we need to create lots of, lots of these um, visualizations. All right, so that's the first one. There you go. Now, we're gonna create three quick things uh, today. Uh, before jumping into that, I also wanna say that uh, I was showing you how this also works with a completely different model. With this same setup, you can go change that brain for another model, and then you will have something else. Let's see, for example, uh, if we change that, um, like we did here, with our friend, Iron Man. Let's just wait for the volume to be um, loaded. And now we'll see here how we have the exact same effect. Let's just render it, even with the same, same. And, and now uh, we, we see how that slice of light is doing exactly the same thing. The, the problem with this is like as soon as you start having very, very dense meshes, the volumes will need to calculate, and it just takes a little bit of time. But the thing is, like, you can just reduce, reduce, reduce the amount of voxels that you're using, and once you're ready to render, you crank them up, you send it to the render farm, uh, whatnot, and uh, you will see now here how we're now slicing Iron Man's helmet. All right? Again, very, very simple technique that could be used in, all the, uh, in very, very other ways, and that's uh, the other way that I was showing you, you guys today. Is uh, There we go. I'm going to stop the render just so it, we, we create like faster volumes here. And in this case, uh, what we have here is pretty much the same, uh, but with a big difference. Like we created one cube to subtract this um, space, this volumetric um, model. In this case, we're not subtracting um, just with a cube. We're subtracting with a cloner full of cubes. And we're creating what you will see now when it loads. As you can see here in the bottom, it's calculating volume builder. So we just need to wait a little bit. Here you go. We're slicing. We have two different, um, you know, two different groups here. One is, the, you know, is using those different cubes that are cloned across the, the model to subtract it. And the other one is used to add it to the model. So um, as you will see, this is what, what, you, can, what you can have just to really segment as many parts as you want. As you, you can see here, again, this is just like not working very well, but you get the point. Like you can be using this for many things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close all these scenes because it's getting heavy. Uh, before going into the other section, again, this is what we were, we were talking about. This is what, what, you just see, what you just seen. And this also is um, adding other plane effectors to make that the spheres that are creating this volume smaller or bigger. Right, you can do it in so many other ways. These are other examples with the same technique. Slicing volumes could be very useful. Now, um, when, when, just, when R20 came up with um, all of these fills and, 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 and volumes and whatnot, what we started doing and what I really like to do is just to get to all scenes and see how these all scenes could benefit from these new things. And what we started doing uh, is, is just to play with some shader effector trick that uh, one very, very good friend from Barcelona now in San Francisco, Mikel the Bird, uh, showed me. To, and, and with that, we're going to create these liquid simulations. Uh, liquid or abstract, I think it's very interesting to how you, thanks to the volumes, could create things like this very, very quickly. Again, we're going to be creating some of that. And I'm going to show you how, how simple it is. So I'm going to just start opening those scenes. This is, again, this is how, I'm going to show you maybe first very, very quickly what that trick was about without having, like, the volumes, without having the fills. And you will see how easy it is to then create things like that. The trick that my friend Mikel showed me was, like, you know, you can create, uh, let's say, a plane. And uh, you have, you'll have here, and I'm going to show you this so you see how, how, how this was being done. You can then create a displacer. Just displace this plane. I can add a noise. It's the other way around, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> With some of these things, sometimes my brain goes left and right too. Um, so you have the displacer, and you have this um, the shader. You can add whatever you want here to be displacing that that plane. What he was doing, it was really really clever. Instead of just putting a, a noise, he was loading a, a layer effector. And this layer effector, when you go in, then it's almost like Photoshop. You then can have your 
noise or turbulence, we can just, just put like a turbulence here. Uh, in this case, he was creating a very interesting way to, so now we have these waves that we see here. And uh, really, if we crank this displacing up, you will see what, I'm, what this is doing, kind of. We can actually add more points to this segment, so we will see it. It's now creating that noise, that those lines, right? Those, those waves. It looks like Joy Division. And this displacer is, is doing that. But the nice thing about this, the, the, the layer effector, that you can add effects on top. And he was distorting this to start getting a very, very different um, effect. If we put 100% wrap, all of a sudden, you start seeing how we're creating these waves. And, and if I just turn, drop this into a subdivision, you, you will start to see what I mean. Like that effect that we were just learning on how to even like animate and whatnot can be something that translates very nicely into our volumes. You can see what we're doing here, this very organic film. So let's show exactly how with these things, we can, we can these, these same technique, these things can be applied to new scenes that now use volumes. I'm going to create a new file. And uh, you know, for the ones who are maybe doing this at home, I will say, uh, I started doing these. You will see here, these are the iPhone um, 10 proportions. So if someone is doing these at home and wants to do a nice background or a nice just like Instagram story animation, go ahead. I'm going to just do this. And I'm, uh, I'm going to use these this, uh, proportions. So in my new scene that I created, we will make it that and that. And this is now our uh, proportions. So now we have like an iPhone looking um, a proportion uh, screen here. What we're going to do is just start with a cube. And as you will see here, like what I'm going to do exactly the same that, that I did before is just like, let's grab our camera and light setup just so we just like save all the time on uh, this is not a tutorial for lighting or any of that. So let's see if we can gr grab that from, the, from that scene. There we go. Here we actually, I'm going to kill this alembic. We're going to start seeing here how all of these cameras, I'm going to copy. These, you, guys, you guys start seeing what we need just a cube and a volume, and then do that same trick with the shader effector. So let's copy that. This is our camera. Let's put everything into an all so it doesn't distract us. And let's create a cube. And this cube, you know, you know let's make sure that this thing just fills up our screen. I'm going to put it here, just by hand, more or less, making it thicker as well. Uh, there you go. And so, so it's, a, it's a perfect cube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, like, this is 400, this is 402, and this is whatever it is, 880, right? And now what we're going to do is the same. Let's create a volume builder and a volume measure. Let's drop this here. Uh, I always do the other way around. And now, let's just get out of our camera. We see how we're creating a volumetric cube. What we want to be doing with this cube, now that we have this volume, first is also making sure that the type of volume that we do is fog. Again, that's going to create all of this information within. That's what we, that's what we need. Actually, I think I'm still doing it the other way around. There we go. So here we go. The measure grabs those points and wraps it into a model. Uh, what we're going to do is create a shader effector. Now, if you create here into fills, that shader effector now is not going to be like a MoGraph effector like we were doing for the display It's, it's going to be a shader fill. But it's, gonna, it's, it's exactly the same. It's still like operating in the same way. And that's the beauty about how cinema is evolving. The stuff that you learned before is still useful on all of the new techniques that they're dropping in. So I'm going to create my layer. And like we did there, we're going to create a noise. This could be exactly the same, the same values that we did there. So you can see that it's exactly the same. I'm going to create a turbulence noise. I'm going to, you know. Make sure that this, not that big, that this is just on the, on, on the scale, on this axis scale, I'm stretching it, and it creates these lines. On top of that, let me go back to this. On top of this, we will have a distortion 
that will create if I wrap it completely. I will create it like that. And we, we can see the effect is exactly the same effect that we had before. Now, what happens if on that volume builder, I drop the shader fill here? And I say, you know, like we did with before. And I say, subtract that. Nothing happens. That's why. That's why, why is nothing happening? Because we have to go to here. Well, if we do animation, I'm, I'm, jumping, I'm jumping ahead. But OK. Let me just release that and multiply it. Now, what we're seeing is like we see what happens is that we're showing it an, a noise. And that's because in this creation space that we see here, we see box. We don't want this to be applied to a box. We want this to be applied to our uh, object. So as soon as I click object, and I see here down here is calculating that volume, as soon as that's done, then you, you can see that, OK, our noise is being affected there. The only problem that we see now is like the scale is not right. So that's when you want to just be going into your, into your scale and brightness of this that we can control from here. And just start cranking this up. It's like, well, let's crank this up into 2,000, because that's going to be what's going to give us the, you know, the scale of the, of the noise that we are subtracting. And you're going to start seeing how we see that. Uh, if you want to do quick iterations, I will suggest that the voxel size, you keep it like a bit higher, so the calculation happens faster. And uh, we're still not happy with it. We want to just keep pushing that even higher. I will say like 5,000. And also, we want to be just like tweaking the brightness and contrast. Because these, after all, are white values and black values. So as you can see now, I'm starting to get some of that. Some of, some of that noise and that undulation that I created with the distortion. I can just add more contrast. And we start seeing something that's generating uh, you know, those volumes inside, uh, those volumes distorted by our noise. The only thing we need to do now to create that a very, very smooth volume is actually uh, go with the smooth effector. And we can find it here in volume, uh, the smooth filter. I can drop that into our, you know, into our box here where we have all of the subtractions and whatnot. And as soon as I drop that, you will see how that all of a sudden does nothing. Why? Because the volume type that we are using is fog. Remember, there are two volume types. What I want is a smooth filter to also be using that. And in mode, in the smooth filter, I see that my volume type for the filter is like, you know, assigned distance fill. That's not what we're working on. We're working with fog. As soon as I change that, bam. Now you have something. Now we start getting into something that we can play around with. And that's the best part about these little things. You do something, you play around, you drop another volume, you drop another different noise. I was like, OK, well, uh, let's say that we want to animate that. Well, it's very easy. Now we have a shader uh, fill here. So I can be animating this. But in the shader fill, in, the, in this noise, I could change the animation speed here, let's say 0.2, so it's very small. And when I press play, it's like, oh, the, nothing's happening. That's because inside of the shader, as I was showing before, there's this refresh frame. Without that, you won't have any of the animations. And the good thing about these noises is that they can have their own animations. Now we can start seeing how these starting to look. And like we did before, um, again, um, I, I can go back to my camera or just this one. We don't really doesn't really matter which camera we use. But I can just jump into my camera copy the, the materials that I had from before. They are not here anymore, so I'm going to just like grab them again. I'm going to copy my materials. Those are the same materials. Again, I did all of those very, very quickly in a day. So uh, just iterating and playing, which is what I, I ask everyone to do. Just go and play with it. It's, it's really a toy. It became a toy of like experimenting, uh, you know, experimentation with all sorts of things. I drop this into our volume measure. I just press render. And look at that. I mean, this is pretty sexy. I mean, already, um, let me just uh, undock this so we can see it. You know, already we have now created these that could be, I don't know, maybe it's your next uh, background for your iPhone, right? So again, we get it. Now this is animated. 
this can change a lot too. We can do a lot of things because now we have that system that, that allow us to play with all sorts of different modes. I will suggest that if you want to really, really like go deep into this, you can, you can start going into your volume builder and even like crank this down to have like an even more smooth, you know, smooth surface. Or you can always just like play with um, things that, that will uh, subdivide that final, that final mesh. I would suggest that when it's heavy, you bake this into an alembic. So you can just select that and bake it as alembic. You go grab a cup of coffee, and in a couple of minutes, you will have that animating real time. It's pretty, pretty powerful. Right, so we got that. Let's jump into the, the, the last little trick, because I don't think I will have time for my part four. Uh, this is something I want to do. Like, don't you guys see all of these like super satisfying little little loops in Instagram and everything? So I say like, hey, you know what? Let's create one of those. Why not? It's super easy, and I want to show you why and how to create these little things. These little things are gonna be created with something that is the collision deformer. Let's just drop those things in. Let's go to our part three, ASMR loops. We're gonna drop this in. And we will see how, how simple this is, really, like, actually, you know what? Let me just open the other one that you guys see in this. This is also one of them, but let, I, will, I will open both. So this is how, this is how we've done that. Like, this is how simple this works, right? Like, here you go. This is our render. I actually, on that render, I had these caps, and uh, you can see that. I'm not kidding when I said that I did this in 10 minutes. Here's our render. Actually, we're missing um, one, of the, one of these textures. Let me just change it for just for the sake of the render. Yeah, no, we don't have any of that. I think we're missing some textures, but it's okay. Let's just, yeah, there you go. And now we see this uh, super smoothy, buttery smooth, soft uh, loop. And I'm going to show you how to do that. That's very, very simple, and I have 10 minutes to show it, but that's exactly what we need, probably 10 minutes. What we need to create this scene, pretty obvious, we need a plane. What else we need? We need a ball. Let's just show how many um, polygons we have here. Let's create the sphere. Once we have the sphere, we also want to change the type from standard to icosahedron to have a more evenly spaced out uh, polygons here. So now, what we want to create is, a, down here, is a collision deformer. And I want to drop this collision deformer into our plane. And to a collision deformer, is going to ask, what do you want to collide it with? So then that's when I want to drop my sphere. All of a sudden, it's going to be boop. That's it. I mean, that's already like half of it, you know? And, and it's very simple. The good thing about that is like, I can actually move this thing around and see how this will look. And it's pretty, pretty powerful. Now, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm realizing is like we could have a bigger plane. And that also we could start having uh, more segments into this and uh, also more segments into our icosahedron. So we start having more and more even smoother things. How we created the other one? You know, pretty simple. Actually, there is this, oops, sorry. That is uh, another sphere, this one you know, we want to put it here. This one maybe half a size or like something smaller like that. And we also want this sphere to be colliding with it. So there you go. Now we have two spheres that are colliding with our collision effector. Very smooth, very smooth. And then what we have is the control, which is created by a spline that I'm going to put into our Z axis. And what I'm going to do is like this spline it's going to be just connected to this sphere. How do I do this? I right click to go to find my Cinema 4D tags. And there is this second tag here called Align to Spline. Uh, and it's as simple as say, hey, which spline you want to align this to? Well, this is my circle. And now I have it aligned. That means like now, if I rotate this circle, which is what we actually, whoop, not that one, which we, is what we actually want, I'm going to do have what, you know, the, the effect that we want. So I'm going to put a keyframe here at the beginning at 0. And then I'm going to go full loop 360. Now, because we want to do a loop, automatically the, the animation system is creating, uh, and you will see how I fix this in a minute, is creating uh, you know, Vizier curves. Uh, as you can see, this is our animation. But if you want a, a clean loop, you want this to be continuous. And uh, to have this continuing into the same uh, rotation, the only thing to do is I select all the, all the keyframes. I click this, and now this is like a constant animation, no curves, this could be looping. And 
I think another thing that, that, that I wanted to show is how the collision has, this collision effector has a lot of advanced you know, controls here. And the most important ones for us also are just the stiffness, how much I want this to be affected by that, or how much we want them to wrap it. But also, like, as soon as I start reducing the size or, or increasing the size, that will affect it. How stretchy that is, as soon as I put this to 50, you will see how this is pushing even more and more and more. So I would suggest that you guys play a little bit with this, because now, as you can see, we're having that, um, that different effect. Like the, the only problem with that is like this is like crashing, crashing, crashing. So because I can control this, uh, I don't want this to be pushing that much. I can just move that spline up. I have that control. And now I have this very, very smooth effect. Again, like I think I'm not forgetting anything for this one. But it's, it's, it's very easy. And also, how fun is to actually just go the other way around and you have a completely different render now. <laughs> so. Or actually, if I just like move that sphere up and one, I want one up, one down, now I have the same thing up and down. I, again, what I'm just trying to say is like, look, it's, it's very, very simple. It's very quick to create these like, almost like simulated soft uh, bodies. And, and, and I would say play around with it uh, and create different things. I, I want to show you how this alternative one was created by just, it's the same thing, right? Like, let's just render this because I want to I want to make sure that what I'm rendering is what you've seen it's like hey it's not that I just made up that in a week or now you know that's exactly the same I have this plane you know this plane here that I'm subdividing to get like this even more smooth uh, transitions and this plane has a collision and the colliders is just one sphere but the difference in this sphere is that I added this vibrate um, tag and when you add a vibrate tag you start getting you know this random Moves and as soon as you start, you know, playing with the stiffness, you will see how this starts like pushing things around, and it starts creating moments where the thing is it's really, really soft, and it's really almost seen as like what it could be like a very, very dense water uh, effect. We really, really like playing with these things, and, and we think it's very, very powerful and simple. So uh, there we go. This could be your new background uh, iPhone. Uh, or Instagram stories if you want. You did it uh, in 15 minutes, and you could do one every day if you want to. Then the last thing that I don't have time to show, because we're running very, very late today, um, I have is how, how different um, old scenes can be used in, in, with the new techniques. If you guys seen my presentation, Seagraph 2018 or Seagraph 2019, you will recognize these guys. Uh, how I was using the tracers. Uh, using the tracers to play these little um, um, sphere balls here, like these, these little lines. And what I wanted to show today is how that same thing, which was made by... Actually, let me open that scene, right? The tracing balls. You remember the tracing balls from Vancouver? So the trace balls uh, was this scene where we have... Well, we pretty much have a sphere moving and that sphere, which I'm going to unhide here for you, this scene has a MoGraph selection. And the MoGraph selection is actually, wait a second. This MoGraph selection is selecting like a few points. I'm going to go back to the beginning. And it's saying like, hey, those points, trace them with a the tracer effector, right? And, and then we were just getting to, the, to get these lines. Actually, because we didn't even want the spheres, we were just turning these off. And that's the way that we were creating these um, volumetric magical spheres that this could even just be nice for like a, the cover for your friend who is doing a new electronic album, whatever it is. Look how quick it renders. It renders with hair render. Uh, one of the tricks that I always fell in love with, how hair render is so powerful when it's not used to actually create real hair rendering, which is very complex. When you use it for graphical things, it's pretty cool. But we were thinking uh, with Joel, Joel uh, Thomas, you know, a great, great artist in our San Francisco uh, studio. Shout, shout out to, to him. He's the master of Cinema 4D for us, really. Um, he is the man who uh, grabbed the same scene, and instead of cloning spheres, he said, hey, you know what? How if we, cre if we clone, you know, a spherical fill effectors? And I'm going to show you what he did. He just really just like with the same setup, instead of cloning, instead of cloning now uh, those little spheres, he cloned these little 
fills, these are spherical fills. He cloned them, he made them editable, so you can then um, have them as different fills rather than inside of a cloner. And I'm sure there's a way to put a cloner into, into, the, into, the, into this uh, vertex map. And what he was saying is like, hey, those, those same lines that you were tracing in Vancouver could be used to create a, an advanced, you know, a reaction diffusion uh, map. And, uh, and he did the same. He just like grabbed those ones, and in here we're doing it with less, so it's less messy. And he created this uh, vertex map that is actually, um, I, I will really, really recommend uh, Hello Lux tutorials on reaction diffusion. It's great, you know, get Teams tutorials. But you will, you will learn there how to do those things, pretty much. It's just like a combination of, of freezing one point on that vertex map, getting that sphere, those spherical fields that we see here, to affect it, and then by a combination of curves, more freezing, and random fills, which are very familiar with, he was then creating um, this vertex map. This vertex map was dropped into our, here we go, into our fall off for the displacer, and he was creating these beautiful effects. Again, just by repurposing an old idea into a new uh, way of doing things. And I think, to have things like these happening so quick, to so have these little things and little tricks, even not knowing the software that well, and for this software to just be so, so powerful uh, at this very, very like entry level, it is uh, something that for us, and I think for the motion graphic industry, for the visual effects industry, this guy's got a technical award in the Oscars this year. They've been finally just like got an award from the Academy. The Academy is recognizing now motion graphics and 3D work done in VFX, and I think with that, and with those examples, I want to finish the, the presentation today and say thank you, everyone. Just catch me up on Territory Studio, uh, Twitter, Marty Romances, or Instagram. Like, you will find me, ask me questions, ask us questions, send us your work. We will love to just review it, and maybe one day work with you on the studio in New York, London, San Francisco, Vancouver. You know, uh, thank you very much.